In the last video, we left off having just created class user right here. Once again, if you see a warning around this class definition, that's totally fine. We're going to fix it up in just a second. So in this video, I want to focus on our implementation of a user. Remember, we had said that a user should have a couple of different properties assigned to it that will be randomly generated. So that should probably be like a user's name and their location as well. To get started, I think that we should define a couple of different fields on our user class. And then we can figure out how to randomly generate those properties. All right, so I'm going to flip back over to my class definition. And inside of here, I'm going to assign two different properties to my user. I'm going to say that every user is going to have a name property that is a string and a location property that's going to be an object that has a latitude that is a number and a longitude that is a number as well. So lat stands for latitude, LNG stands for longitude. Remember, we can use latitudes and longitudes to model a physical location in the world. So we're going to eventually randomly generate a latitude and a longitude, assign it to this user, and use that data to decide where to map a user on our Google Map interface. Okay, so now that we've defined these properties right here, we need to eventually initialize them. Remember, every time we define a property, we need to init either initialize it on the same exact line or inside the constructor. Usually we will initialize a property on the same line if it's gonna be some hard-coded value. But in this case, we want to randomly generate a name and a latitude and longitude. So we will instead do our initialization inside of a constructor function instead. So I'm going to define my constructor function right here, like so. All right, so we've got our place to initialize the name latitude and longitude. All we need now is our randomly generated data. So for that, let's take a look at some documentation for a library that we're going to use to generate that information. All right, so quick link right here. We're going to go to npmjs.com and take a look for the, at the documentation for a package called Faker. The Faker package gives us the ability to randomly generate a bunch of different types of information, which makes it really well suited for the project we are working on right now. So I'm going to go to npmjs.com. Once here, I'm going to search for Faker at the top, and I should see it as one of the first results on here. All right, so here's the documentation. You can scroll down a little bit, and underneath API right here, or excuse me, not API, next section down, here we go, API methods. This is the ex absolute extent of all the documentation we get. Unfortunately, it's not super detailed. So what this is essentially saying is that the Faker package has a module inside of it called address. And we can use the address module to randomly generate a zip code, a city, a street name, a county, a country, state, latitude, longitude. Well, those look really relevant, and so on. Likewise, there is a company module that we can use to randomly generate a catchphrase or a company name, and so on. If you scroll down a little bit more, you'll also find a section inside of here called name. And we can use this module to generate a first name, last name, and so on. So as you might guess, we're going to use this name module to generate some information for our user. We'll use the company module back up here to generate some random information for the companies we create inside of our app. And finally, for both the user and the company, we'll use the address module to generate a random latitude and longitude. Okay, so it looks like the Faker module is really going to take care of all of our data requirements for our application. So all we have to do is install this thing. So to install this package, I'm going to flip back over to my terminal inside of my project directory. I'm going to stop the running parcel server with control C, and then I'll do an npm install Faker, like so. And that's pretty much it. Now the package is pretty small, so it should complete installation rather quickly. Once it's all done, we'll start up parcel once again with parcel index.html. All right, so now we can flip back over to our editor and make use of Faker. To do so, I'm going to go to the top of the file inside my user file, and I'm going to import the Faker module. Import statements inside of TypeScript look identical to import statements in ES2015. So if you've ever worked on a React or Angular application, you're probably going to be right at home. In other words, to access a module that we install with NPM, all we have to do is write out import Faker from Faker, like so. So that's going to reach into our package, or excuse me, node modules directory right here. 
it's going to find that faker module that we just installed, and it's going to give us access to all the code inside there through a variable called faker. Now there's just one little issue here. If we hover over faker, we're going to see a little error message right here. It says could not find a declaration file for module faker. Now this is an error or a warning that you're going to see many, many, many times as you start to work on TypeScript projects. So let's take a quick pause right here and talk about why we are seeing this little warning message.